Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, we're going to talk about setting and achieving your weight loss goals. Now, this, I think, is an important topic and one we haven't really discussed very much on this podcast. And the reason why I think it's important to talk about it specifically about weight loss is that weight loss goals are just a little bit different than setting goals in other areas of your life. Uh, A lot of other areas, you know, you have a lot of control over uh, the thing and and, and it can be a lot easier to uh, come up with a good goal uh, because it's just easier. Like, for example, like a, a good idea for your emergency fund uh, for your finances is, uh, let's say, three to six months of expenses. Well, I mean, that's simple math, right? You can just say, okay, here's what I normally spend. Multiply that by three uh, to six, depending on like how steady your job is. And that's a, a concrete number that you know, like, okay, by doing this, it's going to be a good idea. But the thing with weight is like, sometimes it's really hard to pick the right number um, because you may not know, like, what is a good healthy weight for you to be at? Sometimes that's just kind of a trial and error thing. Sometimes you may think, well, I think I would be happy if I got down to this certain number. You get down to that number and you're like, wow, I'm, you know, this is this was not low enough because I'm, I still don't feel comfortable here. Or, you know, it might be the opposite. You may aim uh, too low and start to realize like, whoa, I am getting really miserable really fast the lower I get. So, you know, it's a little bit more difficult. You know, you won't know uh, until you're down at that certain weight what your body looks like, how you're feeling or how you're feeling about how you're looking. So there, there's just a lot of factors in this certain area. And one tip I would give you right from the start is to be open to recognizing a bad goal for what it was and then changing it. Because sometimes what happens is we get it in our heads like, oh, you know, I want to be at this certain weight because that's what I was in high school or whatever the thing is. And, you know, you realize as you go along like, oh, that's that's actually not going to be a very good goal for me to work towards because, you know, maybe maybe the the types of things that that would require, you know, the sacrifices that might mean either for the, the types of exercises you would need to do or the amount of exercise you would need to do or perhaps even even surgeries that you may need to have uh, to to get your body looking a certain way, or even the amount of food that you may be required to eat. It's a valid thing to say, hey, you know, I want to be able to eat (laughs) a certain amount of food each day. And that's just, you know, I'm not willing to do that. And also be open to tweaking the how, the how behind how you get there. You know, it it might start out that you're saying, you know, that you want to do this certain, you know, eating plan or something and, and you're okay with it at first, but then as you're going along, maybe you're making progress. Yes. But if you start to see that you're really miserable, then be open to changing that. Be married to the goal, you know, instead of being married to the how you get there. Because sometimes it's just hard, you know, like maybe you like to open mad. But then after a while, oh man, it just didn't work for your life anymore. It just didn't fit. It's totally fine to say, hey, I've got to switch things up and I got to do something different because my life is different now. Once you decide like, okay, I'm going to set some goals. uh, The first thing you need to do is sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and write down what you want your goal to be. Now, this takes a little bit of brainstorming and it takes a little bit of time, but some real magic happens when you start writing things down. Writing things down, it's like it sends a signal to yourself that you're really serious and it causes you to commit a little bit better. And it also um, helps you to think things through a lot better. I feel like it's easy enough like, like to commit to something if you just do it all in your head, like, oh yeah, I'll just do this certain eating plan and and I'm going to lose 20 pounds. But when you sit down with it and you say, okay, here's what I'm committed to doing and here is what I'm going to eat or not eat or, or here's my eating plan, you just get more serious and you think it through a little bit better, which means your results are going to be better. So when you're writing down your goal, I want you to remember to be specific. This is so important. And it's something that some people just, they they forget or they don't know the importance of being specific. But when you know exactly what you're striving for, 
it helps you to do everything else better. You know, if if you if you remain vague with yourself, it's really hard to know are you failing or are you succeeding and and that can be really frustrating. Let me give you an example. If you just say I'm going to lose weight and that's your goal. Well, that's not very specific, right? I mean, is an ounce of weight enough? Is a pound enough? Or is it, you know, that you're wanting to lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds or 100? You have to be able to say to yourself, this is what I'm striving for. And that's actually kind of scary. Being specific is scary because it sets up a definition of failure and a definition of success. But it really does help you to be able to know, okay, this is what I'm striving for. Am I making progress? Yes or no. And then you can make intelligent decisions about things you should change based on your results. And a thing that goes hand in hand with that is to know your why. It's the whole reason you're doing it. And your why will provide motivation and it will help you to keep going no matter what, you know, because sometimes this takes a long time to, to achieve a goal. And if you know why you're doing it, it just makes things easier and it helps you to keep going. Now, for example, my why, when I decided, okay, I have really, I've got to get this weight off and here's why it's important. What I saw in my own life was that I wasn't living my life as fully as I could. And I knew that a big part of that was because of my weight. I felt self-conscious about my weight. And so I held myself back. I didn't go out and put myself out there. I wanted to be able to get out there and live life with my kids to be a good example, to, to be able to live a fun life with my husband and to have an excellent marriage. And so all of those things combined into a very strong why that kept me going. And and during those times where it felt really stressful or it felt kind of like it's taken really a, a long time to do this, it kept me going. So once you know your why and you know the specific number you're aiming for, remembering that that specific number, you can change it if in the future you decide like, oh, that was a bad idea. Once you know those two things, then you can write your plan. And I would encourage you right now, you don't need to do more research. You already know the things you do. And it's really easy to say, well, I just need to figure out this thing or that thing. You don't. You just need to start acting. You need to start taking daily action every day to try to get yourself to your goals. I mean, really at the bottom of all the weight loss thing, it's, it's really, really, really simple. And that is you have to burn more than you're consuming in order to lose weight. It's it's that simple. It, all these other things will will help you get there. You know, intermittent fasting, yes, will help you eat less calories so that you lose weight. The thing is that research mode just puts you further and further away from your the day that you're going to reach your goals. And it it's hard because the thing is Taking action is uncomfortable. Taking action towards losing the weight is a scary thing because, again, you know, once you start and you're taking action every day, there's that chance that you're going to fail, right? And we are all scared of that. On some level, we're scared of failure. So we put things off. We say, well, you know, once I really figure out the right, you know, fasting window or once I really figure out the right food seat, then I'll start. But instead, just start taking action today. Just Keep doing what you're doing. Just eat a little less if, if it comes down to that. But write it down. Write down what your plan is. Get really specific. You know, if it's intermittent fasting that you're doing, how many days a week are you going to do it? And what is your fasting window going to be? Are you going to work up to a certain fasting window? Be specific. The reason why that is important is because you need to be able to see, is the thing that you're doing getting you to your goal? And Maybe it will and maybe it won't, but you'll know for sure if you write it down and stick to it. Now, once you start taking action, then you can start iterating based on the results you're getting. So you may find like, okay, uh, well, I'm doing intermittent fasting and it's going okay, but this is a little thing that I found that, you know, I have this lunch date every week with this person and I really want to be able to eat lunch. So I'm going to change that. So you write that into your plan and then you go along and you see how it works and you keep tweaking it along the way so that after a while, you have a plan that fits perfectly in your life. Now, look, nothing's going to be absolutely perfect, right? But you know what I mean? It's going to fit 
really well in your life. It's going to feel doable and it's giving you results. Now, another thing that's really helpful once you've you know written down your goal and you've written down your plan is to break down your big goal into little sub goals. And I like five pound increments. Now, I did this in a simple Google Doc when I wrote down my plan and I wrote down how much weight I wanted to lose. Then I broke that down further into five pound increments. And then I wrote down the date. Every time I hit that five pound increment, I wrote down uh, that I had achieved that. And that was really motivating to see I'm making progress. Now, with most goals that you set in life, you want to put a deadline on it. You want to put a timeline on it because the thing is, if you don't have some sort of deadline, it won't get done. And that's true for so many things. Now, but the thing about weight loss is the scale moves at its own pace. It just does. Like, I still don't know. I mean, I can tell you on average how fast it moves down for me, but that was only after tracking it for a really long time. I had to just tell myself in my head, I'm never giving up on this. And I'm just going to keep going until I get to where I want to be. And even if that means I'm striving for the rest of my life to try to get this weight off, that's what I'm going to do. And that was very helpful because it made it so there wasn't this pressure on me to achieve that certain number by a certain deadline. And I'm really glad I did it that way because I know myself pretty well. And I know that if I had had a, a really tight deadline where I said, I've got to be down at this certain weight by this certain day, I would have done things that were not sustainable. I would have eaten foods that were not sustainable for me uh, and, and done other types of exercise to try to get the weight off more quickly. And Instead, I was able to say, well, eventually I'll get there. And so I would encourage you to just adopt that kind of mindset. Eventually I'll get there. Now, the last tip I'll give you is to set goals in a lot of areas of your life so that while you're losing weight, you're also making progress in other areas. And this is super helpful because if you start to get other areas of your life going in the direction you want them to be in, it does two really interesting things. One is it decreases your stress levels. So the whole stress eating thing, if you're a stress eater, can start to get resolved a little bit on its own because you're just not stressing out as much. Now, the second thing that it does that is really powerful is that because you're striving in other areas, you're getting these victories. So maybe you're having a rough time. Maybe you're plateauing for six weeks on the scale. But if you're also at the same time making progress towards your financial goals, it makes the plateau just less important. It makes it seem like not such a big deal. And you're much less likely to quit on yourself because you've got all these other things going on and you are making progress in life. It's just that that one little area is, is just taking a little bit longer and that's okay. So I would encourage you that while you're sitting down and you're making your goals, look at the goals that you've set and and do a little analysis and see of those goals you've set, well, you know, do you have some that you have a lot of control over that you can make progress on? And, and make sure you have some of those so that you are constantly uh, getting some victories so that you stay motivated. And remember, you know, a goal doesn't have to be something that's really not fun. You know, like, for example, a goal that I have and that, that I've done uh, sometimes in the past, too, that I really enjoy is to say that I'm going to read a book a week. And um, and I love that goal because, first of all, I love reading. Uh, I feel like it's good for my mind and it's a great way to spend my time. And so that helps me to, while I'm striving for all these other things, to know like, okay, well, this one goal I have a lot of control over. Maybe this other stuff I have less control over the timeline or, you know, the exact results, but this thing I do. And I've found that to just be quite helpful. So remember, in order to set your weight loss goals, you just need to be specific. You need to know your why. You need to write down your plan. And then you need to take action. And then as you make progress towards your goals, remember that once you hit a goal, it's time to set a new one. That's a, a mistake a lot of people make is they reach their goals and then they just don't have a goal anymore. And then they kind of stagnate and then sometimes they just regress back. So instead, always make a new goal. And eventually you are going to get to a weight 
and that's going to be enough weight loss. And I want to encourage you right now, be okay with that too. I think a lot of women especially kind of get in this mode where the number's never you know low enough, and so they're always trying to lose five more pounds. And I don't think that's a great idea. I think a much better idea is once you get down to a weight you can be happy at, set a maintenance goal, and then start focusing on other areas of your life that you want to achieve in. So right now, if you don't really have a concrete goal, I hope this episode will help you to sit down, write down your goals, and start to make real progress towards your goal weight. So thank you for joining me in this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. If you're looking for a way to make a tangible difference in the world, I want to tell you about an opportunity you have to help ELWA Hospital in Liberia. They have a problem and we can help them. This hospital needs two bubble CPAP machines for their pediatric ward. These machines will save dozens of lives each month. They're currently using a homemade device, but it is inadequate and it fails to regulate the pressure for the baby's lungs. A proper bubble CPAP machine will control the pressure and help these babies breathe easier. Now, nurse Margot Biggs has posted this project on DonorC. To fully fund the purchase of these two machines, it will take $5,280, which means that every $27 donation will fund 1% of one machine. So if you'd like to help me in funding this project, click the link in the show notes and make your donation. The cool thing about this project is that it's on DonorC, which means that we will receive video updates on how this project is going. And if you'd like to help this project even more, be sure to share it with your friends and family. Together, we can make this happen. Do you want to lose the weight without getting rid of the foods you love and that you know you'll go back to eating again anyway? My book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, teaches you how to practice intermittent fasting so that you lose the weight sustainably and keep it off for good. You can get the audiobook read by me for free when you sign up for your 30-day trial of Audible. The link is in the show notes.